uh, ne- next up we have Leon, and there's Leon. <laughs> okay. Um, so Leon is like one of the probably one of the the gaming on Filecoin, gaming on IPFS OGs, I guess. So um, we're excited to welcome him to the stage, and he's going to tell us a bit about some of his work uh, dating back. You start even even. Yeah, you've well three yeah three years is is OG in in in, <laughs> in crypto years. So, um, but yeah, um, do we have a clicker? Ah. Okay, cool. Take it away, Leon. Does this work or does this work? This works. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> so a couple weeks ago, I reached out to Rachel to see what she was up to. Um, And then she said, hey, uh, you should make a presentation. So that's why I'm here. Um, So I put on my engineering hat, and I figured, okay, let's make this like super technical, uh, really fancy math. And then I realized, oh, maybe the audience here may or may not know about the storage layer. Or they they might not know outside the storage layer. So I figured, let's make this high level. So I kind of called it Quest to Discovering Web Through Gaming Track, uh, Tech Stack. So the first first part is the Quest to Discovering. So I don't know all the answers. I've been around in the space for too long, but I still don't know all the answers. So I'm just discovering, as, as all of you guys are. Uh, but more specifically, like the Web3 gaming stack. So I've been focused on, uh, fo- focused on that. So before I get into the, the Web3 gaming stack, let's kind of understand the Web2 side. Oh, sick, this works. OK. So this column here are kind of all the tools you need to build your game, right? So you kind of start off, I'll start in the middle here with the game engine. So you use Unity or Unreal to build your game. This is like the graphics, the, the physics engine, all that stuff, the right tool for the right job uh, to build, build your game. But once you have your game, uh, where do you store it? Right? So the immediate answer is uh, some centralized uh, service, such as like a S3 bucket. Obviously, uh, we're going to see an arrow here that points to something else, but we'll get to that later. Uh, and these are this is like the, the whole game itself. right? So think of it as like the, the music and the level, the whole game. Right, uh, but you have also things that change all the time, such as uh, levels and stats, um, things that are dynamic, and that's where the database layer comes in. So you can use, you know, your Postgres or your your MongoDB. Um, also, this is centralized. So how do we address this uh, solution? We'll get to that in a bit. And assuming you have all these three things done, where do you publish it? So the last bit, uh, such as Epic Games or Steam, uh, think of this as like the app store for for games. Uh, where where do you publish this? So in order to build a game from A to Z, you need to be familiar with all of these tools. So my takeaway message with this is, uh, if you're trying to, it doesn't have to be games, it can just be anything, really. Like kind of start from the beginning and and work all the way through, even just to prove a concept, to understand like the pros and cons of each of these tools. So obviously there's there's gonna be a handful, um, and and I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that in a bit. So, uh, this next slide, I don't know what this next slide is, so we'll, we'll find out. Okay, so h- how did I end up here? Well, how did I end up here, right? So if you were to rewind three plus years ago, as Aaron said, um, it started off as a hackathon project. So I think some of you might know what HackFS is. It's sponsored by ETH Global, great partnership. They do different hackathons, one for, for DeFi, others for um, ha- f- file storage, right? So uh, it was me and, my, and a buddy. And we were thinking, okay, what should we do? And this was like 2020, 2019, like before DeFi was like even a thing. I'm like, okay, let's build a wallet. And they're like, no, not another wallet. So I figured, okay, let's build like a tipping system, right? And this was before L2, so I was like, okay, payment channels, like Bitcoin Lightning, that type of stuff. They're like, no, my buddy, who's the designer, he's like, no, I don't think this is a good idea. And I, I got frustrated. So I figured, let's do something the complete opposite, right? Let's not make Let's not take things too seriously. I'm still kind of like in that mindset, even though I'm dressed like this. Uh, let's, let's have some fun, right? So I figured, let's, let's build a game. And the idea of this game is it's going to be really basic because we didn't have that much time. Let's build a game that's single player, but the whole game itself is hosted on IPFS. Falcorn didn't exist at the time. Uh, the whole game on IPFS, right? A completely decentralized single player game. Is that possible? Uh, long story short, it is. Uh, there's tons of documentation. Uh, well, I, I take that back. I went on Google and I searched, uh, what did I search? Like IPFS, uh, games on IPFS. And there was like one forum 
with like one comment that said, I think this is possible, and then immediately got shut down. I'm like, okay, there's something here, right? So the take home message is, when it comes to these hackathons, uh, experiment, right? It doesn't have to be a serious project, do something for fun, obviously Google it to see if it exists. If it doesn't exist, hey, you, you might be onto something. So that kind of kick-started this, this, whole, this whole project. And uh, the idea is to just focus on this one layer, right, the, the storage layer. So instead of hosting it here, let's host the full game um, on IPFS. So uh, th it was possible, and uh, it was, this is like the first proof of concept game. And uh, when I talked to Rachel, she said, hey, like for this demo, you should talk about IPFS FPS, which is like what it's called. Um, the slogan is like, we put FPS in IPFS or, or something like that. It's pretty bad. Um, and, and this whole game here is, is completely decentralized. So if you see in the URL up here, it's uh, hosted on Fleek. So you can have a resolver to figure out the CID. You can like verify the source code with uh, the hash to make sure everything's good. And it's been living for 2019, ever since. You know, I don't really maintain it, nothing, and it just, it just works. So if you want to test this out, go to this link up here, and, and there are a couple levels you can play. So this is kind of the, the first level uh, where it kind of explains how the game was built so, in a gamified way. So the game is built with a combination of technologies used to make the web more open and resilient, play through the floors to see how it all fits. So you kind of you know, shoot these, these uh, robots, and you work your way up, and it kind of explains how, how it's all put together. So this is in a gamified way. Um, if you don't have uh, too much time, we ended up uh, making, uh, if you go to this link here, we have documentation, like written documentation on how to do this. And I figured, okay, this is, this is cool. So uh, I, I took a step away from this because I figured it was a hackathon project. But there was something that kind of itched at me, and I figured this is a single player game. The state or like levels or, or uh, stats are fixed, right? It, it doesn't change. So how am I able to make dynamic content, right? So uh, another analogy is like the web one world, right? It's just like static images and text. How do you make it more dynamic in terms of websites? How do you make it more dynamic in terms of games? So um, here comes the second layer. So uh, Filecoin EVM didn't exist at the time. So I'm gonna throw uh, this, this little logo here. Um, which is, think of this as like your dynamic layer, right? So these are things that like, like assets that you can transfer, ownership, levels, things like that. So I figured, okay, let's kind of tackle this, this layer. Um, and I, I didn't have an answer. So uh, I ended up writing articles. And I think, no, not yet. Um, so I ended up writing articles to see if, if things bite, right? And I took a few steps back and I figured, do people really need this? Uh, I think this is 2020. And uh, over time, I realized, yes, it is necessary because there was like this itch that I was trying to build these games that connected to the, the EVM that uh, I didn't have tools for. So let me explain, let me explain. So uh, think of this, the left-hand side is, is you building a website, like your dApp on a website, and the right-hand side is building your decentralized uh, game, right? If you're building your, let's just say, your Uniswap, on the left-hand side here, you have all the tech required to build that game. So on the bottom here, you have Ethereum or your virtual machine. Uh, on the top layer, the green, is your HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So this is kind of like your button to make things a little bit nicer, uh, your graphs, things like that. Uh, but what's important is that red layer right in the middle to do the connection. So when you click the send button, stuff happens on the back end to send information over to the blockchain to do something, right? And then you get something back, right? So you need this translation layer uh, this middleware uh, between the front end and the back end. This exists on the web side. But on the gaming side, uh, you're kind of missing that. Right? So you have your Ethereum or your, your, your virtual machine. Uh, you have your game engine. Um, you're not going to build a game with, with HTML. I think it's a good proof of concept, but if you were to talk to a, a game studio like Jacob knows, it's, it's a game engine. Right? Uh, Unity, Unreal, you, know, you have these tools, the right tools for the right job. But the problem is this middle layer. So how do you connect your game to the blockchain? Um, and that's the thing that I've been focusing on for like the last couple of years. So I ended up starting a, a, a really small project called Web3.Unity. Um, it got a lot of support from the Falcoin Foundation, so shout out to everybody here who's, who's supported me, like low key, you guys are awesome. Um, 
And this is what kind of kickstarted this, this project called Web3.Unity. So um, I forgot what this next slide is. Okay. So uh, I spent years working on this little pink dot here, this really small layer. Um, and I think this is just as important as all these horizontal layers here, because it's that communication layer, right? Um, ended, up, ended up getting acquired, um, and it's, it's, doing, it's doing quite well. Um, but besides that, like if I were to rewind a little bit, uh, in the beginning, I didn't have the answer, right? As I said, I'm kind of discovering things along the way. So this is kind of like a, uh, like a little story for, for you guys to, to, to know that. Like I, I don't know like everything. I don't know a lot of things. But what I do know is if you have an idea, like throw these little articles out there. Like if you have a concept, throw it out there and make it public and see if anything bites. Like that's... Honestly, like, don't tell your, you can tell your friends, but it's the, the random people across the street or the random person reading your article. Those are the ones that are going to give you like, real feedback. And these articles I started throwing out there, I don't know if you can see the date in like, 2020, um, on how to do these connections. right? And that's when people started messaging me and saying, oh, OK, this is cool. Like, do you have a library that does this? Um, I, I clearly did not at the time. But that's what motivated me, motivated me to kind of get started. Um, yeah, so long story short, like, if you have an idea, try it, make it public, and, and don't keep it a secret. So uh, fast forward a couple years, uh, this became like a full-fledged product. It's uh, web3.unity, you can see here, uh, it got acquired. And uh, over the years, I realized a lot of these game developers, uh, big insight, are not web3 developers. Right? These come from the Web2 space, as Jacob said. Web2 space, interested in the Web3 space. Makes sense, because this whole space is extremely new. The Web2 gaming space is, you know, has been around for a while. So instead of focusing on the, the, source, code, the, source, the source code on how to do all these connections, uh, I spent a lot of time, or we spent a lot of time, on documentation. So if I were to have a ratio, I'd say 25% on source code, 75% on documentation. Yeah, so we spent a lot of time talking to people on Discord, uh, feedback, back and forth. OK, what do you guys need? What are you guys trying to build? Um, and a lot of these things, we actually like pre-built for them. They're called prefabs. We pre-build like, snippets of code for them. So when these game developers come in, they don't have to code all this stuff all at once. They can just, it's like a little icon, right? They just drag it into your game. You hit play, and, and stuff just works out of the box. So these are little insights we learned along the way. And I think this can apply to the Web3 space in general. So if you're a developer, like a hardcore developer, um, documentation is not, if not more important, than the, the source code itself. So if you just have a readme with a title, like reassess, make some documentation, reach out to people, and, and get some feedback. Um, so not just documentation here. Uh, we, have, we have videos. So I, I don't know how many videos there are. Uh, the beginning ones, these are mine down here, are like pretty bad. But uh, that's, that's another thing, right? So YouTube is like one of the biggest search engines. Like a lot of the traffic comes through here, which is mind blowing. So if you're a developer, tap into Medium, tap into writing these blog posts, tap into uh, that documentation, that Git book. But also, if you have tutorials, five minutes, three minutes on how to set something up, like this will save a lot of time, not just for you, but like for the developer itself. And, and the reason why I, I realized this kind of took off was in the beginning, it was just me making these videos. Like, hey, what's up? Like, this is how you click the thing and how you drag it, right? And then the core team started contributing as well. They're like, hey, Leon, what do you, what do you think about this tutorial? And I thought, okay, this is great. Like, just go for it, right? And then they started making these videos. So that's why the icon looks a little, little bit different. But what really took off was when the community started making videos and started asking questions like, I didn't even know how, how it worked. And they, they started getting stuff working. I'm like, what the heck is going, you know? So that's when I realized, OK, this stuff is working, right? So idea point is, co source code's great, but really focus on documentation, video, and like getting the word out there. Um, I'm quite introverted, so it, it's quite hard to, to do this. But this is just as important. OK, so we went over the bottom three layers. Um, and then now is the top layer. So the top layer is the platform. And this was recent, I'd say, within a year. Um, and this product here is called Hyperplay. So I'm an advisor over at this, this company. 
Um, and what this platform does is it kind of wraps everything, everything together, on the right hand side here, everything together. Um, so think of it as like a Web3 platform for both Web3 and Web2 games. So uh, it's, it's, it's basically a game launcher. Um, I didn't make these slides, but I, I stole it from, from the team. It's a lot better. Uh, so if you can see on the bottom left, it's a Web3 game launcher and store aggregator. So an, another really hard part about publishing games is once you make the game and everything's done, like how do you, how do you share it, right? Uh, a lot of people go through the App Store, and because App Store is centralized, there's like this big wall that says yes or no. Um, I have other side stories I can tell, talk about it later where I got rejected. Um, but this is like a, a more open version of um, Web3 games. Like we're more experimental, we're more open to trying new tools, trying new concepts. Uh, this is what we're about. So uh, in order to visit, go to hyperplay.xyz, but I can tell uh, you a little bit of, about the features. So uh, first of all, it's uh, a cross-platform. So you launch the game, it, you just go to hyperplay.xyz, there's like a download button, right? You download it, you double click it, it's like really easy to use. Um, and uh, it's, it's a launcher that's cross-platform, so it works across Windows, Mac, Steam, Linux, like all this stuff. Um, and it's also uh, censor censorship resistant. So I can, I can talk about like the philosophy of Filecoin and how it's you know, distributed and it's like a more open web, but everyone's here for a reason. We all understand that, so I don't have to go into this. Um, but just know that Hyperplay like, gets along with everybody. So we try to use the best tech, Filecoin IPFS, um, along with all the Web2 tools. So you can play your um, Counter-Strike or your uh, Fortnite with the same platform, but also your Web3 games. Um, for both Epic Games and GOG, so that's another launcher. So we try to get along with everyone. Um, and it's, uh, it's a seamless wallet. So we, uh, we partnered with uh, MetaMask. I think everyone here knows what MetaMask is. Uh, they have two features. They have a feature called MetaMask Mobile, which is like a QR code where you scan it with your phone, so all your keys are on your phone, and then all the signing uh, is done on your phone, but like all the UI is on the, on the desktop. Um, we're one, I think we were the first to implement this, the, the MetaMask mobile SDK. Um, also the MetaMask extension. So I'll give you some examples later on in the slides of like how it works. Um, and then of course Wallet Connect. So it connects to 40 plus wallets. So well, let's actually see like a screenshot of, of how it actually works, I think. Okay, cool, yeah. So you can use the extension. So the, the same wallet you have on your browser, it's directly overlaid onto your game. So this is the actual gameplay. Imagine this has full screen, and you have a, a buy button, right? You hit the buy button, and immediately you have this uh, pop-up that looks very familiar. So you're not, you don't have to leave the game. So I'll, I'll take a step back. Like a big problem with building that, that middle layer, that pink little arrow that I, that I made, was not so much the, the reads. So you can read state like pretty easy, like get the balance of pretty easily, but the really, really hard part are writes. So how do you send transactions? How do you sign uh, off on, on a contract, right? Because a really important thing is like, where do you store your keys? So there's a balance. So if you store the key in the game, you're risking security, right? Because the game can have bad code and can you know, take your funds. Or you can store it somewhere really secure, like let's just say like a cold storage wallet, but the UX is terrible, right? You have to plug it in, enter in all these pins, terrible. So what we're trying to do is trying to find that middle ground where the wallet is stored in the launcher itself. So it's one wallet connected to multiple different games, um, and then have this component where it makes the UX a little bit nicer. So that's like a big problem that we're tackling, and, and hopefully in the next couple months we can, we can make this a little bit better. It, it's all discovery, by the way, so. Um, so this is the, the pop-up, but also you can do uh, through mobile. So the, the MetaMask scan, so you launch the game, there's a QR code, you scan it, so all your keys are on your phone. And same idea, if you hit the buy button, uh, there's gonna be a pop-up on your phone that says, hey, do you wanna confirm this purchase? So you make the purchase, and there's a little uh, this icon thing that pops up to say like, okay, it's, it's connected. So you have different ways. Uh, we're still experimenting. If you guys have any other ideas of how to connect your game to a wallet or a wallet, like please reach out. I think we were talking about account, account abstraction, so that's another way of, of handling that. So different ways, if you have ideas, like, like please reach out. 
Um, so besides this, uh, is it live, right? Everyone's asking like, oh, these, green, these slideshows are really nice, but is it live? Yes, the short answer is yes, it is live. And as of right now, we have 22 plus Web3 games that we have. So these are just uh, like, I'd say like double A, pretty good style games, 3D graphics. You can just try right now. Uh, I think it worked like months ago. So yeah, the, the idea is it's out there. It's not just conceptual. We're still learning, iron, ironing out the kinks, but uh, it, it, it's there. Um, not, not just these games, but we also support all the Web2 games, so you can also play your Fortnite. Um, besides that, we also have partnerships with MetaMask, uh, BitDAO, and Ballast, so shout out to Zach here for, for Ballast. Um, quick, quick story, uh, the whole back end, like if, if I were to rewind, that little shooter game saved on IPFS, we kind of scaled that up, Ballast kind of scaled that up, so all the games that you see here runs on Falcoin and IPFS. Like all these games are completely decentralized right off the bat. And the best part is, uh, as a game developer, when you upload your game, it's just a form. Like you don't have to do some crazy CID stuff to, to, to get it working. It's all under the hood um, the way it should be. And, uh, and it's also uh, backed by game, uh, this is game seven. So it's a, it's a DAO interested in gaming. So anyone in here who's interested in gaming, not just, uh, any layer of that tech stack that I mentioned, where is it? Any layer here, if you're interested, uh, reach out to me. Uh, I also help out over at Game7 uh, to, to build any of these layers out. So if you're interested in research, grants, um, storage layer, right, uh, new products or games, or if you know anybody who knows any other games, we'll support you in terms of publishing, um, walking you through like A to Z on, on how to go from idea to, to game. So. Um, here's my contact information, uh, somewhere, over here, uh, Telegram, and um, and that's it. Thanks, Abby.